Day Rail lovers, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you haven't heard of Squarespace, it is an amazing user-friendly platform that allows you to create and customize your own website, but also run email campaigns as well as certain other features, which we are going to explain later during the video. Have you ever wondered how much freight fits into one railway wagon? What kind of products is being transported in each of those different railway wagons? Why they are technically so different and why do they look the way they do? If you ever looked at some passing train and thought about some of these questions, this video is the right place for you, as our today's topic is freight wagons. As you'll see during the video, it is practically impossible to uniformly talk about the railway wagons, as their types as well as marking and coding of these vehicles differs from region to region. Anyway, as we are from Europe, we will stick to the European marking, but this will be good enough because regardless of where you are, the technical solutions are still similar. Let's start with the definition of freight wagon and the troubles with marking and codification that we indicated, and then we'll talk about each type of freight wagon one by one. Freight wagon or freight car, generally speaking, is a rail vehicle that is technically adjusted for the transportation of freight and which does not have its own traction. Demand for ever-increasing massive-scale transportation of goods on the railways influenced the design of freight wagons and the appearance of a large number of their different types and variants. As railway systems were at the beginning developed within the borders of each country, or at least limited to a certain geographical region, we ended up with a countless number of different technical solutions. But in general, we could all agree that there are four basic types of freight wagons, open, covered, flat and special. All four can be either regular or special with certain technical adaptations and improvements, as you'll see during the video. Besides different technical solutions, each country developed its own system for marking freight wagons which, with the increase of the international traffic and with a number of different types and variants of freight wagons, started causing certain troubles. Therefore, the first international piece of legislation dealing with the rules of exchange of railway vehicles on the borders, as well as the use of freight wagons in international traffic, at least in Europe, was the so-called RIV from 1922. This act introduced sets of standards that freight wagons had to fulfill in case their owners intend using them for international traffic. The mark RIV on the side of the wagon meant that that particular wagon is safe for operation, which was accepted by 41 countries in Europe and the Middle East. Just for a matter of fact, 650,000 freight wagons had the RIV mark in Europe. In the 1960s, the International Railway Union developed an international system of classification of freight wagons, which different railways started to gradually apply. This act brought standards in terms of wagon categorization, which is basically standardized series of freight wagons, and obligatory marking which you might have seen if you ever saw the side of the wagon. In 2004, the UIC Fish has been updated due to the introduction of a large number of private rail companies. Based on that document, the Intergovernmental Organization for International Carriage by Rail has developed the so-called Uniform Technical Rules, which today is the basis for marking of freight wagons in Europe. In order to assign particular freight to a particular freight wagon, you should know the following. First, the appearance of goods, i.e. is it bulk, palletized goods, containers, compressed gases or something other. Second, how do you perform operations with freight during loading, unloading and reloading? I. Is it gravity unloading, overturning from the front or from the side, is the forklift used, etc. Third, is the needs in terms of weather protection, including wind and temperature, protection from stealing, does the freight should have an option to overturn or roll, etc. And fourth, requirements in terms of the equipment, such as how the cargo space should open, is the wooden floor needed, or maybe moving roof, what is the unloading pressure, etc. As we said, the most basic categorization of wagons is open, covered, flat and special, where within each of these four in Europe and in general in OTIF countries, there are several different series of wagons, as you can see on the screen. It's good to know that, for example, in the United States, the wagons are classified in groups such as box cars, flat cars, gondolas, hoppers, reefers, special service cars and tank cars. 
Within each of these groups there are several series of wagons marked with a code consisting of two or three letters, as you can see on the screen. Within the category of covered wagons there are three series of different vehicles. Regular covered wagons, special covered wagons and refrigerators. The main purpose of the regular covered wagon is the transportation of palletized goods, animals, food products and other goods that must be protected from atmospheric influences. They can be 2 axle or 4 axle by definition and they have ventilation openings whose number depends on the number of the doors. For palletized goods loading is done with a forklift but it still can be done manually. As for any other series of the wagons, the narrower specialty or further technical details of the wagon is indicated by the sub-series designation. For example, index letter A in a series designation means that wagon has 4 axles, AA that it has 6, G that it is adjusted for the transport of grain, H for fruits or vegetables, etc. However, the meaning of these index letters can still vary between different OTIF countries and only certain letters are universal. Special covered wagons can be 2 axle or 4 axle and similar to a G wagon they are used for freight which need protection from atmospheric influences. They are characterized by a larger loading space as well as siding doors that can be opened at once from one third to one half the length of the car. Due to this construction loading ramp is not a must, having in mind that forklift can access the loading space from the height of the railway track, without entering the wagon itself. Inside these wagons there are horizontal or vertical partitions which are used for fixing the load against displacement, while airbags are added at the ends. They are most often used for the transport of auto parts as well as the transport of palletized goods. Index letters and their meaning is shown on the screen, of which we can single out A which means that wagon has 4 axles, BB which means that we are speaking about the long wagon, I which means they have openings or shunt walls, L which means there are movable partitions and N which means that they have higher load capacity. Some of the most famous examples of H wagons are HBBIILNS, HABIS, HABBIINS and HCCRRS. Try yourself to identify the purpose of these wagons knowing the marking that we learned in this video and using the table of index letters. Write it down or tell us in the comment section. Let's move on to refrigerated wagons. Of course refrigerated wagons are used for the transport of goods which require special temperature conditions, such as food. These wagons are capable to keep constant temperature inside, naturally or artificially. All refrigerated wagons can have built-in hooks for hanging meat, floor grills to protect goods from spoiling, as well as fans. Within this group of wagons there are four different types. Isothermal wagon which has double walls between which there is isolating mass. These wagons do not have any devices for artificial cooling. Cooling wagons have double isolating walls as well as reservoirs with ice. Wagon for deep freezing has isolating walls as well as cooling devices. And lastly there are heating wagons with special devices for heating for goods which require higher temperature than the outside, especially during the winter. Of course, they also have their table with index letters and their meaning, which you can see on the screen. We can single out A wagons with 4 axles, BB with 2 axles and very large floor area, C with meat hooks, D for fish, etc. Before jumping to the next series of wagons, let's for a moment talk about something really useful that we have, thanks to our today's sponsor. Let's for a moment say that for whatever reason you need a website, but you don't know web design. No problem, Squarespace is a platform that facilitates the creation and customization of a wide range of websites. It has many different and tastefully done templates that you can use to incredibly simple and fast create any kind of website. Also Squarespace can provide you with the necessary web domain. In addition, with the help of Squarespace your website can get more reach using very powerful email campaign. Not enough reach, even if it's all your subscribers. No problem, Squarespace allows very easy integration with your social networks which allows additional connection with your followers and even bigger popularity of your website. If you want a free trial we recommend you go to squarespace.com slash explained where Railways Explained has the opportunity to provide you with a 10% discount of your first purchase of a website or domain. 
Thank you Squarespace for recognizing and supporting Rebus Explained. We could say that this type of wagon is the most usual and most recognizable railway freight wagon. They can be two or four axle and they are used for the transport of bulk goods, which does not require protection from weather conditions. Still, for this kind of protection, different kinds of covers can be used. These cars usually transport coal, coke and boxed ore, gravel, metal scrap, but also larger pieces of cargo such as unprocessed and semi-processed wood. For these goods, it is not necessary to secure it from moving by attaching it to the floor of the car. Loading is done from the above, unloading can be done with grabs or depending on the system, it can be done by overturning from the side or from the front. The best known examples of these wagons are EAS and EANOS. As we can see from the table, A means that they have four axles, N is marked for higher loading capacity and O prohibits the tipping from the end. Special open wagons F are those weirdly designed wagons which are used for the transportation of bulk goods of different granulation. They can be 2 axle, 4 axle and even 6 axle. Their weird design is the result of their capability of so-called gravitational unloading. This basically means that the freight is being unloaded only with the help of its own weight. It is done with opening the folding doors on the unloading openings that are on both sides of the car and with a sloped floor. The openings are extended into the pouring area or conveyor belt and the opening mechanism in some sub-series has clips, so it is possible to control the quantity of unloaded goods. Loading is done through the opening at the top. Index letters AA in a designation of F wagon means that it has six axles, LL that it uses gravity unloading on both sides simultaneously at the bottom, and that it has higher loading capacity, etc. The K-series wagons can be exclusively two axle, they have low sides up to 50 cm and wooden floor with or without stanchions. In general, they are used for the transport of freight that does not require weather protection and of smaller sizes and quantities. Some of the wagons have higher sides on the rear and front, allowing the use of covers. Depending on the type of goods, the manipulation is done with a forklift, a rich stacker, a crane or a smaller grab. They are most often used to transport wooden products, containers, assemblies, vehicles, machines, etc. Some of the most common are KILS, KBS and KGS. I means they possess removable cover and non-removable ends, B stands for long stanchions, G for the transport of containers, L is for those who do not have stanchions. These wagons are 4 axle only with 2 bogies and a loading capacity of at least 50 tons. They are used for transporting heavy and large products of metal processing, construction and wood industries, rails, cables and coils, etc. Within this series, there are wagons with covers with high sides to protect shipments from atmospheric conditions. Of these, we could single out RINS, RGS, ROONS, RMMS. Wagons with index letter G are fitted out for the transport of containers, double O have non removable ends 2 meters in height, double M have a limited length, etc. Special flat wagons L are among the most interesting freight wagons. They can have two, three or four axles without bogies and they are primarily used for the transport of containers or road vehicles. If you see a train with road vehicles on it, regardless of whether is it a commercial car or special road mechanization, it's a good chance that it is an L wagon. Some of them have two platforms and in that case cars can be loaded on both with the help of a front ramp. Wagons are designed in such a way that cars can seamlessly move from one wagon to another. There are guides for car wheels on the platform and devices used for fixing. Wagons specially constructed for transporting containers are usually two axle and serve the transportation of 20 and 30 foot containers. A special flat wagon with four or more axles, S, is by definition used for the transport of intermodal units such as containers, interchangeable transport units, semi-trailers or complete road vehicles. Also, they are used for military transport as well as heavy objects. They have a reinforced floor, which can be of normal height or lowered and adjusted for the transport of vehicles, with or without sides and stanchions.
This series of wagons is one of the most common on the railways and therefore there are many sub-series with different characteristics and purposes. For example, there are SG and SS, SA and MNPS, SDG and SS, SGG, MRSS, SAA, DK, MS, etc. For example, SDG and SS and SDG, KMNS are specialized for the transport of semi-trailers as they have special pockets on the floor used for the wheels of the road vehicles. They are also used for the transport of 60-foot containers, which is the meaning of index letter G. SAA DKMS wagons are also known as roll-out wagons or low-floor wagons and they are used for the transport of complete road vehicles such as trucks. They usually have more axles and smaller diameter wheels. Shims or cold carrier wagon is also interesting as it also has specially designed pockets used for transport of sheet metal coils. They have a removable cover and their length is a little bit shorter than in the case of most S wagons. There is also the so called Inno Freight Wagon, which is basically a modular freight wagon consisting of two coupled wagons. In that shape, it can transport two special open top containers and it allows simplified manipulation with the bulk freight. As their name suggests, these wagons have a specially designed moving roof which enables weather protection. Within this series, there are two groups of wagons, depending on the type of freight they are used for. For bulk freight, there is a hooper wagon, and for palletized or packed freight, there is the so called covered wagon with swiveling roof. Unloading of bulk freight can be done gravitationally using very adjustable openings, which can be opened and closed with a special mechanism separately. Some examples of this series are TBIS, TALNS, and TADDS. The table with index letters is shown on the screen. Special Freight Wagons U are, let's say, special. There are two basic series of wagons in this class, and they are UC, wagons used for the transport of powdery and granular materials with unloading under compressed air and UAI and UAAI used for the transport of heavy, really heavy or big objects. UC wagons have one or more boilers for transporting powder materials, and are primarily intended for transporting cement in bulk, but they can also successfully transport other materials in powder or grain up to 5 mm in diameter. On the other side, UAI and UAAI wagons are used for heavy and bulky objects such as boilers, transformers or similar, which cannot be transported using other wagons due to their height because they would exceed the loading gauge. These wagons require special safety precautions while in transport, but that would be another topic. Index letter C means unloading under pressure, A and AA is the number of axles, I means they are fitted out for the transport of objects which exceed the loading gauge. And finally, our last wagon. Wagon Z, also known as tank wagon or chemical wagon, is also something that you must have seen if you ever saw a train. They are specialized for the transport of liquids such as fuel, oil, bitumen, asphalt, tallow and wax. Various liquids can be transported with these wagons, but to avoid detailed washing of the tank after transport, on the wagon itself it says for what type of liquid that particular wagon is used. Tankers are often used to transport dangerous goods, so for the identification of the type of liquids or gases, they are additionally marked. By painting boilers, placing strips to mark the type of material and hazard label, a detailed description of the type of liquid, etc. These wagons appear more often as private or lease wagons than wagons owned by railway companies because the companies from the chemical industry have the most need for such wagons. And while you were enjoying watching different series of tank wagons, we came to an end of this video. You were watching Railways Explained, the channel fully dedicated to different railway topics. If you enjoyed, please like this video, subscribe to our channel for more, and of course, thank you very much for your attention. Don't forget to share with us your impressions in the comment section. Were you familiar with freight railway wagons before? Did this video help you understand better all these series? Would you like some similar videos in which we would explain some of the series in more detail, etc. Also, we would really like to thank all our patrons for their generous support on Patreon. Without their contribution, the making of these videos would be much harder. 
If you also want to become part of our Patreon community, check out our account on the link in the description and check out some of the cool railway products in our online store. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Until the next time, goodbye.